Hi friends, welcome back to Sheena's Homestead. If you're new here, I'm Sheena and this is my homestead. <laughs> Today is a gorgeous, gorgeous day. We are in the thick of summer now. Um, and right now it's about 6.30 p.m. on the farm. And I love this time of day. It is golden hour. That is um, a special hour known to photographers for its beautiful light. So I love to come out here when the sun is about to set and water my plants and just kind of take tally of all the things that are growing and what I need to get done and how I'm going to move forward. Um, and as things come to harvest, uh, what things I'm going to plant in their spot when that harvest is over. So let me take you through my garden for a little Wednesday update so you can see our progress here on the farm. This is something I am super proud of. These are my yellow squash that we grew from seed together. And you will not believe the harvest we are going to get on all these guys. It is just amazing what one little seed can produce. So I think this is going to be our first major harvest of the season. And here, this is a carrot. And it was a volunteer carrot that started growing um, back in the spring and I let it go because we are letting it go to seed. As you can see on the top, it has big flowers. Um, so we are going to let those die and dry out there on the plant and then we're going to collect those seeds for next year. And then here I have my cabbage. I do have some holes in my cabbage. I think a um, cabbage butterfly has gotten to them but I find that they tend to leave uh, the actual cabbage alone in the center because it's so tightly wound as a ball um, so I'm not too too worried about it and as you know I'm very very organic so I would rather leave it than spray something on it but anyway um, look at my onions holy guacamole they are huge. This is the biggest onion harvest I have had to date. I mean, look at this guy. It's just gorgeous. And some of the tops are starting to fall over, so I think they're almost ready for harvest. And here is some basil. Happy little plant. And remember when we planted dill seeds together, we planted them in the middle of these rows to try and get some more use out of the ground here. And it has worked perfectly. So, and then just, we have a couple volunteer Swiss chard in the mix there. We've had a lot, a lot of harvest out of that. And then here is my guacamole. I'm sorry, not my guacamole, <laughs> my garlic. And I think that it is almost ready for harvest as well. And then we have some beautiful beets. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. And some more chard and rainbow chard. And these are my green beans back here. They have started to flower, so we will have green beans very soon. And then we have some granny tomatoes. Those should be a really nice yield. Those were delicious last year. And more onions. And a little bit of lettuce right there and a tomato on the end. Just using up every inch that we can. Over here, we've got our five beautiful beds that Rob grew for me. And look at that lettuce we planted together, friends. Oh my goodness. It is so abundant. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just amazing. 
And then we have some zucchini here starting to flower. And then here I'm experimenting a little bit. We have corn that I planted from seed and we just got it in the box. So we'll see how that does. And then I have a pepper plant and a jalapeno and some of the carrots that we started. Some are getting really big. And then of course we have all of our Roma and San Marzano tomatoes right there. And a little bit here. And then here I am trying some lemon spice jalapeno. So those are popping up and doing quite well. We have some other things we're trying here too. Got some kale coming to life. And then over here, we have a couple more squash plants. Just beautiful. Everything is coming in super nice. And then I decided that we needed a little bit of a trellis for um, our cucumbers that are starting to grow. So I bought these two at Menards. I think they were about $20 each. Um, so I've got two here and the cucumbers are gonna go right up and we're gonna just keep attaching them as they go, but pretty nice. I really liked the zigzagged design here because I felt like that was a little more sturdy than something that just goes straight up and down. Um, I feel like those get top heavy. I think we have a better chance of these staying up. And they're beautiful. I just have to take the tag off. I'm not sure where you live, but here we are having the biggest drought we have ever had in my lifetime. Um, it hasn't rained in, I don't know, more than a month. Um, and the last time it did rain, it was like five seconds. Uh, so I have had the task of individually watering all of our fruit trees. And I do know that I could purchase um, some soaker hoses and I'm probably gonna have to do that going forward. Otherwise, I'll be spending a lot of my life out here. Um, but that's just the way it is right now. I'm making sure all these trees get enough water Oh, and that was another thing I wanted to share with you. You can hear the birds chirping in the background. Um, they are so thirsty. It's really sad, actually. They'll come up to me with the hose, not even afraid. Um, they're so thirsty. So while it's been really cool being like Snow White <laughs> with the birds landing all over the place around me, um, it's also really sad because they are very thirsty. So we've been taking um, a couple of the extra duck pools that we have, filling them with water and leaving them out in the front of the yard and on the side, just in hopes of getting a couple more birdies and whatever other animals are out there a drink. Um, our chickens are happy, but they've been really hot too because with the drought, um, there's just, there's no moisture in the air, nothing. And it's gotten really, really hot during the day. In fact, today it was 93 and it's only June. Usually this is like late August weather for us. Um, it was really, really hot. I couldn't even come out here to do much. I have to wait until the evening time um, so that I can get the animals some food and water and things. Of course, they, they were all set up early this morning with Rob, but you know, just refills on everything and getting all the trees watered. I just set a timer and I go 15 minutes down the road, just trying to constantly rotate, get everybody what they need. But it's pretty sad around here. Um, as we drive from um, our house to other places, you can see right through the trees, the leaves are all um, sad and wilted and kind of curled up. Um, just this, it's not a typical June for us. There have been no mosquitoes. I mean, I guess that's a good thing, but on the other hand, that's what the birds and the fish eat. So, uh, I don't know, not good, not good. 
but just trying to enjoy every every evening and every minute we can here on the homestead. This is one of our peach trees. She is super full and we are really excited about that. Oh, here's a little birdie just waiting for me to leave so he can get a drink. I'll walk down this way so that he can go over to the hose. I'll show you over here. It's our plums. They're doing fantastic. And you can see down here we put um, Alessandra's bunny litter all over the, the base of the trees in hopes of giving them a little bit of extra compost. And then I'll show you how the grapes are doing. Looks like they're doing pretty good. These I put in little jewelry pouches in hopes of saving them from the birds. And I think that's actually working because you see this one is pretty eaten. So I should probably come out here and put a couple more jewelry bags on there to save them. Oh goodness, this one is doing really well. Look at that. Oh, that is exciting. My whole plan for the grapes was to grow in all along the fence line um, just to give us a little more privacy and I think that's going to work out really well. I mean this is, um, we planted these grapes last year at this time. So this is only one year of growth. I think, I think that's pretty good. So I know I told you guys this before but I'm really excited about our blackberries. I trimmed them back. Um, I think it was really early spring which you're supposed to do it kind of as soon as your um, harvest is over uh, but I didn't because I was afraid and I watched a bunch of videos kind of figured out what I'm supposed to do and how to do it so I went out um, very early spring it was still pretty cold and trimmed them all up and I, I think I told you but Rob was like oh no what did you do um, but I did a good job because our blackberries are in full, full bloom. I've never seen this much of a harvest before in my entire life. So I'm pretty proud. I will definitely do a tutorial for you this fall when I trim them again. So let me show you. That's another thing, I just love how the bees are all over these blackberries. So um, considering we're in such a drought, there's not a lot of flowers. There's not a lot of clover. Usually our whole field here is full of dandelion and clover for the bees and there's none. It is, the grass is absolutely dead. There is <laughs> no life in it except for the places that we water because we're trying to we don't water the grass but we water um our flowers and our trees and things like that trying to keep everything alive so in the process some of the grass gets some water and those are the only spots that are alive which is pretty sad um but we're supposed to get rain tomorrow and maybe the next day so praying to God that we get some of that rain and it doesn't just dissolve like the last couple storms but um fingers crossed so these are more mature peach trees and this guy is just absolutely loaded 
He does need some water though. And here we have an apple. And this is a wildflower patch that has come in really nicely. Actually, I think I'm gonna pick a couple of these and bring them inside. They're just so beautiful. Actually, I take that back. The bees need them more than I do, so I am not going to pick them. I'm going to leave them to the bees. But speaking of flowers and bees, I am doing the bees a huge service because look at this. I have these four wildflower patches here. The birds like to eat my seeds, but um, these are all zinnias popping up. They're going to be absolutely beautiful. I took so many gorgeous pictures this last year in this spot. I'm really excited about it. So just waiting on those. I am disappointed in myself because I didn't um, do this whole process as early as I wanted to. I wanted to get a good head start, but life was super crazy with Jacob's baseball. Um, Angelina's travel volleyball, Liliana's dance recitals, and Alessandra in piano, and all the kids in piano, actually. So it's just been really busy. This is going to be the Cosmo spot. I have some Cosmos coming up. Those grow really fast, so I'm not worried about that. But yeah, look at the grass. Look at this dead spot here. I've never seen this before in my life. Of course the weeds are still surviving <laughs> oh. but this is a low-lying area as well our yard slopes downward um, towards this corner here and you can see our weeping willow that usually thrives in the water in this corner is very sad and these are some river birch that love water as well they are not doing very well. I better get the hose out to them as well. So friends, thank you for following along with me today on this little update. Um, let me know what you wanna see next and what you're looking forward to. Tell me what you're growing in your garden. I can't wait to hear about all the things that you guys have tried and started and what successes you've had. So let me know down in the comments and I will talk to you soon, friends.